Hours before Tuesday night's arguments, the president appeared to shift his stance toward the judiciary. Earlier this week, he tweeted about the Washington judge who put his order on hold, writing, just cannot believe a judge would put our country in such peril. If something happens, blame him and court system. But Tuesday morning, Mr. Trump said he wanted his order to be tested in the courts. Mr. President, how far are you willing to take your travel ban fight? Oh, we're going to take it through the system. It's very important. It's very important for the country. As you heard there, Mr. Trump suggested he'd respect the court's process. Let's bring in our political panel. Sarah Isgar Flores is a spokeswoman for Attorney General Designate Senator Jeff Sessions. She's in Washington. And in Chicago, Hari Savugan is with us. He's a principal at 270 Strategies and former National Press Secretary for the DNC. Welcome to you both. Hari, let me start with you. Some commentators suggested Monday that President Trump was trying to undermine the judiciary. How do you understand his comment Tuesday that he'd take his order, quote unquote, through the system? I mean, it was an extraordinary comment to attack a judge like that. But what I think we saw on Tuesday during the hearing is um, a very specific question of law is going to be answered. So even uh, after the Ninth Circuit rules, this is probably going to go forward to the Supreme Court. But on this Ninth Circuit uh, decision and argument, what was interesting is that the government was presenting a case essentially that they would suffer irreparable harm if, uh, if the stay or the temporary restraining order was left in place. But earlier that day, earlier today, uh, the, the Secretary of Homeland Security, whose job is national security, uh, said that a delay in rolling out this ban would have been in order. If that's true, then a, a delay because of the temporary restraining order uh, shows that there can't be any irreparable harm uh, suffered by the government. What, what about that, um, Sarah? I'm curious, your, your thoughts on um, Hari's last point there, because in fact, that is what we heard uh, from uh, the Homeland Security Secretary, that perhaps there should have been a delay. Well, as an attorney, he's missing the second point here. It's not just uh, the chance of harm. It's also the chance of success. The judge had to find that there was a likelihood of success on the merits at the merits stage. Judge Robart actually did not really ever show that there was a likelihood of success because, as we know, there's really not. The president has wide authority in foreign policy, particularly when it comes to immigration. So regardless of how this turns out at this stage, uh, most legal scholars out there will tell you that the exact executive has this wide discretion and is very likely to win on the merits, whether at a lower court or at the Supreme Court. I also think it's worth pointing out that this idea that uh, uh, that so many Democrats are saying that he won't respect the judiciary feels rich to me, considering that it was actually President Obama who ignored a judicial order, an injunction uh, against his DAPA order, and instead ignored it, violated it, and continued with his policy that had been found unlawful by a federal judge, which feels to me far more undermining of our federal judiciary. All right. Well, let's, uh, Sarah, let's, let's talk about now. This case could go to the Supreme Court. Should this ban be the focus of confirmation hearings, you think, for Judge Neil Gorsuch? Oh, I'm sure Democrats will find anything they can to throw at Neil Gorsuch. Unfortunately, they have someone like Neil Katyal, Obama's top lawyer, who has said that Gorsuch should be confirmed. He's incredibly well qualified. I think they're going to have a tough time finding principled reasons to stand against Neil Gorsuch when, on the one hand, they're trying to say that he'll be uh, too lax with the Trump administration. On the other hand, saying he's too against the executive branch and the administrative state. So they're sort of all over the map on their uh, opinions of Judge Gorsuch, but in the end, the American people are going to agree he's incredibly well qualified to sit on the bench. Hari, do you see it the same way? I take it not. Yeah. <laughs> Let me quickly address something that Sarah said earlier about uh, the discretion the president has. The legislation that she's referring to does give the president authority uh, to suspend alien uh, immigration. However, uh, that same legislation says that uh, they, he cannot discriminate based on nationality, and this is discriminating based on the nationality of seven different countries. So I think that uh, there is a chance, uh, a very good chance, in fact, uh, that uh, on the merits this case will be decided against the ban. To the point on, uh, on um, Judge Gorsuch, the standard has been set by Republicans. It's not about qualifications. We saw that with Judge Garland, who had a uh, um, a unanimous 
uh, voice vote for his confirmation in uh, when he was appointed to the federal bench, uh, to the appellate court, and he was held up, not because of his qualifications, but because of politics. Now, Judge Gorsuch, I think, is going to be judged uh, based on whether he, uh, to the immigration man, whether he uh, believes uh, in an equal protection of laws for all, not just for some. And I think that's a very important question. Uh, it's a constitutional question that he'll be uh, asked to answer, and rightfully so. So, Hari, a new Quinnipiac poll shows 51 percent of voters oppose this ban. Should Democrats then make the Gorsuch confirmation a referendum on that ban, you think? Well, I think, you know, listen, he, he should definitely answer whether uh, it should be a referendum on whether he will support and defend the Constitution of the United States, which includes equal protection uh, under the law. It includes uh, uh, the First Amendment, which uh, prohibits the establishment of a state religion uh, and religious freedom. So I think there are serious constitutional questions to the ban uh, that will be addressed, and I think uh, Judge Gorsuch will have to answer those. Uh, Sarah, let's turn to this. Uh, your boss, Senate Democrats are holding an all-night protest against your boss, Senator Jeff Sessions. How do you plan to move past this contentious process if and when Senator Sessions is confirmed as Attorney General? Well, he will be confirmed tomorrow for Attorney General uh, with a bipartisan vote, it looks like. And he's made clear that he is going to be an Attorney General for all Americans, that upholding the law is a top priority for him, cutting down on violent crime, enforcing our borders, uh, uh, pushing back on cybersecurity and encroachments and fighting terrorism. So I think that people are going to be uh, very pleased with Attorney General Jeff Sessions when that uh, time comes tomorrow night. And, uh, and I think the Democrats here have done what they've done with every other cabinet pick. They've tried to make this about rejecting Donald Trump as president, but we just had an election and Donald Trump won. And I don't know what else the American people need to do to send Democrats a message. They've lost over a thousand seats since Barack Obama took office in 2009, but it's not getting through. So uh, President Trump will get his cabinet despite Democrats' best efforts. You know, between George Washington and Barack Obama, if you added up all of the cabinet picks uh, that had been left unconfirmed by this point in those administrations, together they would be less than Democrats have blocked from President Trump at this point. All right, so Hari, Sarah's talking about Democrats' oppositions to President Trump's cabinet picks, but I want to zero in on one, Betsy DeVos, because I'm curious what your thoughts are on why there was such a concerted effort against her. Well, I, I, it's curious to me too. I, I, you know, and this speaks to Sarah's point uh, about confirmation of, of cabinet picks. The reason that this process has been uh, so slow is because of the his, you know, the historical uh, nature of of these cabinet picks. They they are uh, the most unvetted uh, picks with the most potential conflicts of interest. Jeff and Sessions that combination had been in is going to twenty years. Uh, he had turned over a hundred thousand pages, and he still isn't confirmed. Twenty years. He's going to get his vote tomorrow, uh, Sarah. And, and I, I hope you're right. I hope he is a is an attorney general for all Americans. But from what I've seen so far, that that just isn't the case. That wasn't his record. His inability to stand up to Donald Trump, who is or be independent of Donald Trump, uh, is is troubling as well because Donald Trump isn't being a president for all Americans. Uh, so I hope you're right. I don't think you are based on the record. All right, um, Harry. Let me ask you this: House Democrats are huddling in Baltimore Wednesday for their annual policy retreat. At this point, what do their priorities look like? Uh, I think it's going to be one to, to ensure uh, the Americans that the 30 million Americans that got health care under the ACA are going to be uh, continue to have the security uh, that uh, they've enjoyed, that they know that they'll if they get sick, they're not going to go uh, bankrupt, that they'll have access to care. I think that will be the, the, the first item uh, that they're going to do. And then they're going to, have to put out, I think, a positive agenda as well uh, to present to the American people going into the 2018 elections. All right. Always a lot to talk about. Sarah Isker Flores in Washington and Hari Savugan in Chicago. We appreciate your insight. Appreciate it.